So for IndyCar Racing at Sonoma, 2018 marks a farewell. So to celebrate that and the history of IndyCar at Sonoma, we are in Project Cars 2, and we are going to do a 10-lap sprint to the finish in the 2016 Indy cars. Now what's very interesting about this race, so well, it's interesting for two reasons. Number one, tire wear is an incredible key to this race. 10 laps are going to absolutely destroy the Firestone red tires that the entire field will be starting on. So it's gonna be a slip slide, grip centric race. Who can manage their tires the best will end up in victory lane. And also a bit of another Project Cars weird part is that this will be a Chevrolet only race. I had originally hoped to have the four real life championship contenders, those being Joseph Newgarden, Will Power, uh, Alexander Rossi, and Scott Dixon in the game. Unfortunately, when I did the setting that allows both the Chevys and the Hondas to race side by side, I got cars with oval wings for some reason. So that was kind of strange to see on the IndyCar layout of Sonoma. But regardless, this should be a very exciting race because of the fact that the tire wear is very, very much a key. The front row is going to look very familiar to you. I qualified second behind Will Power. I am, of course, driving. Well, this is Juan Pablo Montoya's Chevrolet from 2016, but of course, it's Joseph Newgarden's car now. So I guess we'll call myself Joseph Newgarden, and let's see if we can at least get the win, maybe not the championship, from Scott Dixon. So here we come down for the green flag at Sonoma coming into the shortened hairpin for IndyCar. Got to make sure I don't run over Mr. Power, my teammate. He gets a jump on me as we come down for the green flag at Sonoma. Heading into the first corner is Power there. He's got to be there somewhere. Yes, Power will lead. We're going to be very careful again. Don't want to take out our Verizon. Team Penske team made, but Bourdais coming to the inside of me. He'll make that move, made a little bit of contact there. I think we're okay. I think we kind of shoved Bourdais off the track. Now I've locked the brakes up. That's not going to help the tire wear very much. And Ed Carpenter, not Ed Carpenter, that's Spencer Piggott makes a move down to the end, or I guess it's Jordan King because it's number 20. All right, lock the brakes up again. Charlie Kimball will go underneath. So I need to be really careful, or I need to refocus here. The AI are in 120%, 70 aggression, so these guys are going to be very tough as they all go kind of wide out of the hairpin. I had a better line through there. Had to be ginger on the throttle. Oh, big understeer through there. I was checking to see if the car had damage. It doesn't. Just, uh, oh, side by side with Bourdais. More contact with Sebastian. Boy, he's not going to like me after this one. We are just absolutely hammering on each other. We head down into the hairpin for the first time at racing speed. Charlie gets a better run off the hairpin that time. We'll complete the first lap. I do have some push to pass. I'm going to have to use it at some point. I got 10 pushes, so I have one per lap, essentially. Ooh. Ran wide there. Got a little bit of understeer. Over the crest of the hill. Had to be careful in the throttle application there. And went in a little too late on the brakes there as well. You can see how much time you lose if you get the braking wrong. Here comes Borde again. Borde looking. Doesn't have anything for me just yet. He might try to outbreak me down here. Ooh, as I went a little bit wide. Try to get a little bit better apex. I really made up a lot of time through the last time. Gonna burn a push to pass. See if I can't make up a little bit of ground on Charlie. Won't have any arrow understeer through there that time. He certainly did not. Ooh, really sent it down into the chicane that time. On the power. Try not to use too much of the Firestone Reds. I am closing the gap. Probably should have been in first gear there. That probably would have been a good idea. Kept it in second for the hairpin. That was a bit of an error on my part. Gordy was really looking up the inside there. Thought he was going to take a look. Not 
There you hear it looking to the inside again. You got a better run through there. Try to out drive him in the carousel. Right now it looks like I am. Definitely losing a lot of time coming into the non-NASCAR section of the track. The old circuit, I guess, if you will. Learning another push to pass on this part of the track. It seems to be where I make up a lot of time on Kimball. Look how sketchy that is through there. That's a corner where you ask a whole lot of the tires. And you saw the results right there. Oh, a little bit of a lockup. It's not going to help my case, but I did gain a little bit on Kimball that time. I didn't get the poor run onto the hairpin. Down to third gear, a little bit wide that time, a little bit wide. a little bit better board. He gained a little bit, but he certainly didn't take a look. Ooh, that was a little bit of a bobble from the car. Going down the carousel. Well, that's a lockup. That's going to be giving up the position of board A. No, it's not. Thought he would have gotten underneath me. That was definitely a big mistake for me. It was nice of Bourdais to give me that room. I am surprised he did. Another lockup. Starting to drive the car a little bit too hard. Send it off into the hairpin. On the power, on the way out. Starting to latch myself onto the rear end. Charlie Kimball's number 83. A little bit of dirt kicked up right there on the exit. Understeer is real through there. Bourdais got to run. He's got to run. Looking to the inside. He's got alongside me. He didn't quite pull the pass off, though. I went wider out of than I wanted to out of that corner leading onto this, well, fast part of the track. I almost said straight away. That wouldn't have been the correct terminology. All the way down to first. Find those apexes, David. Thank you very much. A little bit of grass on the exit. Don't want to do that too much. Or a little bit of dust on the exit. There's not a whole lot of grass on Snow Mark, is there? All the way down to first gear. Get it in there. Try to chase down Chuck here. Well, my pace is matching the leaders. At least according to the Stig. Much better through there. Nice and smooth. Tried a different line through the carousel that time. I didn't lose any time board A. I don't think I gained any time on Kimball again going wide there. Bourdais latching himself onto the back of me. I definitely make up a lot of time through there. Car still stand underneath me. Just catching the curves right there. Definitely gained on Kimball. If I can get through the hairpin decently. Oh, I may have a run on Kimball in turn one. Let's see. Nope, didn't feel confident on the power. 
Kimball still got it, but there we go. Fastest file sector of the race. So I might be managing my tires a little bit better than the AI right now. I'm losing a little bit of time through there. Definitely got a big push in that corner, despite the fact that I felt like I got the car very nicely slowed down. And I got to be careful about that entry to the carousel. I got very wide there, and it's possible if you catch that dirt the wrong way, you're going straight off like I did just there. I'm using the track limits a little bit. I must say, probably why IndyCar uses the uh, much tighter version of that corner. Oh, and, and Piggott was on the grass right there, on the curb. He didn't quite lose it, though. Very wide there. Going to try to get a better run on Kimball. Can't quite do it. I'm chasing him down, though. The reason I don't use a push to pass here is because I don't feel like I could really be a good use of it there on the front stretch. I might have to use one coming to the start and finish line in the last lap though. But again, I want to save it for then, not for now. Again, the car really struggling in this part of the track. Really, really struggling. Here comes board A. Oh, board A actually finally gets a sneak through right there. Yeah, my car can follow through here. No, not at all. Tires starting to go off the cliff. Bourdais with a nice move to get around. I know I'm faster through here. Go down in first gear. On the push to pass. Ah, there you go. That's what happens when you follow a car through there. Just didn't quite have the grip I had when I was out front. Park it down in there. Yeah, Borde is catching Kimball. Still haven't gotten the last lap of the race yet. We might be on two to go because I've got three push to pass left. And I didn't use one on the opening lap. That's where my car really is starting to struggle. You can see Bourdais, maybe he managed the tire best, uh, might manage the tires best of everybody because he's catching up Kimball in a hurry. Those early lockups certainly didn't do me any favors. Now I've got Matthew Brabham all over the back of me. Think about the on that guy behind. push to pass. I might be far enough behind board A that I might not have to worry about arrow push through here. Ooh, the car was a little bit loose at the back end though. Oh, I closed it down, but I used up my tires a little bit. Ooh, on the exit as well. Big old power slide. Got it right there behind board A. Still don't have the run off the corner though. There you go, last lap. Oh, uh, off the track. Let's try to be super smooth. But also at the same time trying to get that power down, trying to hit those apexes. Be screwed on the wheel inputs, the car slipping and sliding out of the corner. Oh, well, again, really wide, couldn't get the car to turn in there. On the push to pass very early because I'm going to need to use it again on the main straightaway. If I've got any kind of a run on board A. 
Ed Carpenter car was looking to take power for the first place. But it looks like Project Cars is going to predict that Will Power is going to win. He's up all the tires now, David. On the final push to pass, it's not going to happen. Boy, I came so close to board A there. I thought I was going to get him. I had a final lunge, but it didn't work out. Fifth place for Joseph Newgarden at Sonoma, but that was, that was good fun. That was hard racing on the highest difficulty in the game. So as you can see, Will Power takes the win over Spencer Piggott and Charlie Kimball. Sebastian Bourdais fourth, I was fifth. Then you go down to the rest of the field, see where everybody else finished. In fact, the real driver of that car, ironically enough, is John Potter, who I believe is an IMSA driver for Magnus Racing. I'm pretty sure that's the same John Potter. Just saying. So Indy Cars at Sonoma. This is a pretty fun challenge in Project Cars 2. I really, yeah, I definitely got schnookered on the start there. Really side-by-side -side racing with uh, my teammate Power. And then I just made a mistake here, let Bourdais get underneath me, and then when we made contact, that was uh, the start of all bad things, because it screwed up my line, screwed up his line, allowed Piggott and uh, Kimball to really get the jump on me there. So, thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this, enjoy Project Cars 2, IndyCar, and Motorsport content, you're in the right place, so subscribe as well as like the video and leaving me a comment what you thought of it. Have you tried this? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Enjoy Sonoma IndyCar for the final time, and we'll see you in the next video.